Hello, welcome back to our introduction to psycholinguistics class. I would like to explain about language and brain. Before we continue the discussions, I need you all to imagine and practice. Firstly, if there is a beach ball on your feet and someone's call out kick it, imagine now kicking it really hard. The second one, if there is a ball and in front of you and someone say, pick it up and throw it to me, imagine also which hand that you are going to use. The third, you are sitting in a doctor's office facing the door into the doctor's room. You hear some people talking in the room but you can't make out what they are saying. So you strain to hear. You turn your head slightly towards the door. Now you can make out what is being said. Imagine which ear that you are going to use. So based on those experiments, you can imagine whether you are left-handed or right-handed persons. If you are dominantly use your right part of your body, it means that you are right-handed. If you are dominantly use your left part of your body, it means that you are left-handed persons. And you know that is amazing thing that actually the use of right part of body and left part of body are controlled by different part of the brain. So in our brain, we have two big part which is called as right and left hemisphere. And those are connected by what is called as corpus callosum. So the big part of the, uh, the brain are covered with a tissue which is called as cortex. And you know, at the early age, the color is pink, then it grows older into grayer color. To make it clearer, there are some parts of the brain from the other head view. Here we have what is called as right hemisphere. And you also have what is called as left hemisphere. This is the front part of the brain. This is the front part of the brain and here is the back part of the brain. So in the brain we have what is called as frontal loop, we have parietal loop, we have occipital loop. Okay. From the left side view we have clearer divisions of the brain. The first is frontal loop here, external center is here, Broca area, as we have discussed before, it relates to the works of language productions. We have Wernicke area is here, it relates to comprehensions. We have temporal loop is here, occipital loop is here, and parietal loop is here, and the angular gyrus is here. Okay, each part of the lobe and part of the brain has different functions. First, frontal lobe functions relates to cognition. Temporal lobe relates to hearing. The functions of parietal lobe relates to sensing, touching. Uh, occipital lobe functions uh, in vision. Axner center works relates to writing. Broca's area, as I have mentioned before, it relates to the productions of the language or encoding speech. Wernicke area relates to the works of comprehending the input. And the last one, angular gyrus, relates to language processing, memory retrieval, and attention. There are some language processing in our brain, but the main part are three. The first is speech productions. When there is an input come, just like a question come to your ear, then it's going to be processed in your Wernicke area. In the Wernicke area, there is a process of comprehensions. Then it sends to Broca area. In Broca area, the information from Wernicke will be processed to make instructions for motor area. Then motor area governs the articular three tools, then you can speak. So when your lips move, your tongue move, it means that it was governed by motor area, which was instructed by Broca's area. The second language process is reading aloud. In reading aloud, you will see some input from visual things like written text. So it works with visual cortex or it is in occipital loop in the back part of the brain. Then the information will be uh, transmitted by angular gyrus to a next area. Then the input will be processed to change uh, from the graph things or written things into information. What is that about? Then it sends to Broca area. The Broca area then instruct motor area to move the mo your mouth. Then your mouth will produce sound, will speak aloud, your mouth will move to produce uh, understandable language. 
and the third process is speech comprehension. Speech comprehension means it means that we will understand what someone says. It means there is an input which comes to your ear, then it is processed through auditory cortex. Then it is sent to the next area as comprehensions, and then later it is interpreted. There are some hemispheric facts. The first related to dominance we have discussed previously. If you're right-handed, it means that you should be left hemisphere dominant. If you are uh, le left-handed, it means that you should be right hemisphere dominant. But normally, about 90% of the people in this world are right-handed. So it means that their left hemisphere dominates the right. But there is also left-handers, which is about 10% of the people in this world. But amazingly, only 30% of them are right hemisphere. So the 70% are left hemisphere with left-handers type. It causes some problems like stuttering or delay in speaking, and also dyslexia or inability to read the text. And the next one, that is what is called as decotic listening. This is an experiment where a person listen to slightly similar sounds like b and d from both the ears, then to test whether they listen to b or they listen to d. If they listen the right ears input higher than the left ear, it means that he is right dominance. And that is also what is called as lateralizations. This is a specific functions of each hemisphere. So right brain has specific functions the left brain has specific functions too we will discuss uh, like this one so here the left brain hemisphere has some functions to control the right part of the body and second one it has a responsibility for spoken and written language when you are thinking about science and also mathematics it works with the left hemisphere and left hemisphere also has responsibility to provide reasoning on every understanding of analysis. And the right hemisphere has some functions like first to control the left part of the body, understanding some musical sounds and also arti artistic awareness. And the third one, when you are imagining like uh, situations of space and also patterns, you will use your right hemisphere because it relates to imaginations. And also when you are imagining and correlating between your experience to go somewhere and you would like to put it into a certain image like in drawing or painting, it means that you are trying to create an insight and generating mental image. It means that you are using your right hemisphere. And the next one, there is also what is called as brain plasticity. Brain plasticity is about the ability of a hemisphere to take over tasks of other because of maybe accident or maybe there's a lesions or defect in one of the hemisphere. So the doctor remove one of hemisphere, for example, in hemispherectomy case. So one hemisphere is lifted, like in the case of five years old children. The left hemisphere was lifted in a surgery because the left hemisphere works most on language then after the surgery somehow that the, ch the child has difficulties to produce the language but amazingly after 10 months then later it was tested in 20 on the age of 24 the child can speak correctly good in writing so it means that 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 his right hemisphere take over the job of the left hemisphere. So that's all our discussions about the first part or the chapter of language and brain. So we will discuss further later in the next video. Thank you, keep learning.